Welcome back to Cornwall and a series that tries to show you some of the best areas and activities that this wonderful county in England has to offer. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline and so far I've wandered around gorgeous gardens such as Trengwainton and Glen Durgan, hiked a couple of sections of the southwest coast path from Lizard Point to Kynance Cove and Land's End to Port Canal Beach, hiking what felt like a tropical paradise. I've also taken in some of Cornwall's mining heritage along the path visiting Batalic and Levant Mines Beam Engine. I've watched a performance at the stunning clifftop Minac Theatre, flung myself off of other sea cliffs as part of a co-steering tour, and in the last episode rented bikes and cycled along the Camel Trail in search of Rick Stein's fish and chip takeaway in the pretty town of Padstow. In today's video I'll be splitting it across two very different weather days, a glorious morning where I get the adrenaline pumping and a rainy afternoon going in search of a very unique waterfall. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribe so that you can join me in my Cornwall adventures. Good morning and welcome to this rather dull and unassuming car park at a bay that I don't actually know how to pronounce. It might be Car Lion Bay, but I'm hoping that the car park is not representative of what we're going to be doing today, as I'm hoping that it's going to be way more exciting as we are going off on a 90 minute tour on jet skis. We've rented a jet ski each, so it means that we both get to drive at our own pace and our own speed. And it doesn't mean that one of us is just having to hang on at the back. The birds circling in the air were a good indicator that something was in the water and the mammals turned out to be porpoises, smaller than dolphins with a shorter fin and a more rounded face. We learnt that the gannets that you can see diving into the water do so in hopes of a meal. They have air sacs in their faces and chest which act a little bit like bubble wrap, cushioning the impact of the water which would otherwise be brutal at 60 miles an hour. Unlike dolphins who can be very sociable, the porpoises were sadly not interested in us, despite our efforts of turning off our engines. The jet ski tour continued without seeing much more in the way of wildlife, but instead was an exhilarating ride travelling at what felt like crazy speeds. We'd stop every now and again to either take in the coastline and its towns and villages, or in spots where our guide had previously spotted other mammals such as minke whales and dolphins but with no luck for us on this day. We headed back to Carlion Bay and I'd lost all sense of exactly where it was as each time we reached a new bay I kept thinking it must be this one. Upon our return to shore we found ourselves with the perfect English summer's day and so we decided to make a beach day out of it. We picked up pizzas for lunch as Carlion Bay helpfully had a few food trucks to choose from right on the sands. We chilled out for a while cool down with some iced coffees before making our way back to our cute shepherd's hut to really take advantage of the rare sunny day and celebrate it with a barbecue eating al fresco. Today's just one of those days where not everything has quite gone to plan. Originally we were going to drive to Tintagel, catch a bus up to Boscastle and then walk back along the southwest coastal path but unfortunately we woke up this morning to really quite heavy rain and the weather forecast was saying that the likelihood of rain today is up in like the 80% and that it was going to be pretty much constant. So instead we've had quite a leisurely start to the day, we've made a packed lunch, so it's just some leftovers from the barbecue last night, so lamb burger, sausages, along with a whole load of salad -y bits and pieces, and we've driven close-ish to these places and there is a waterfall called St Necton's Glen and we figured well if it's quite heavy rains this waterfall should hopefully be quite spectacular so we've managed to find a little lay-by to park up next to and we're just gonna stop have a little bit of lunch first of all so that we don't end up walking up to the waterfall really really hangry and once we've had our salad pack lunch we'll make a start on trying to find these waterfalls. Thank you. 
Lunch has been eaten and we've just made the quick walk up the hill from the lay-by that we parked in. And you can probably see behind me the sea. So that makes it the southwest coastal path, exactly the part that we were planning to walk along today. And I'm getting a little bit of stick right now because I'm being told, look, it's blue skies. direction to go in. The people who had the car behind us had come back so I asked them if you just come from the waterfall their answer being yes. I said which way do we need to go? Very helpfully they told us to go up. He took one look however at my shoes and he said oh that's good you're wearing good footwear because it's really really muddy and quite slippery. Certainly this first section that we've walked through has been beautifully tarmacked and it's walking in amongst really cute quaint cottages that have got some of the most beautiful summer flowers in their gardens and shortly after those houses it's just opening up to huge farmland fields that just run down to the sea and you've got the coastal cliffs and there's plenty of the seabirds flying around as well as the more inland birds as well. It's a really lovely start to the walk. I was fully expecting it to be enclosed in like a forest following up a river. It was very, very different to my first impressions of what I thought. This walk is so incredibly stunning. It feels almost like it's a tropical rainforest if it wasn't for the fact that it is a little bit chilly. But the luscious green colour is lovely and the coverage of all of the ferns is lovely as well. The one thing that has come as a bit of a surprise though is just how busy it is. But I guess if it was sunny, people would be at the beach but instead they've come inland. So it turns out that these waterfalls aren't actually free to access. The path going up the stream is completely free to access. We then were led up to, like, I suppose, a gift shop and then a place where we could buy tickets for £6.45 per adult. So I'm feeling quite pleased that we managed to get the free lay-by parking because then if you'd added on the extra £3 for a car to park, certainly if I was coming completely on my own, it would be just shy of £10 to be able to see this waterfall. So I've now got some very high expectations that this better be really good. I suppose this is what happens when I've got a plan A, I know what I want to do today, the weather throws a spanner in the works on it and I quickly grapple for a plan B and I haven't quite researched it enough and I get caught out with all of these extra costs that I had no idea were coming my way. platform number one. <laughs> Oh, 
45. I'm pleased that I've paid it to get in. I think I am. I think had I walked all the way up the stream to get to the point where you had to buy a ticket to get in and I at that point turned around and said no I don't want to pay it and then went back again. I probably would have got that whole FOMO, fear of missing out. I would have felt like I'd come all of this way from London and this spectacular waterfall that has been carved out by Mother Nature. I would have missed out on it. So I am really pleased that I've come in. The £6.45, it does feel a little bit on the steep side, but I do fully appreciate that things like the pathways to get down to it are incredibly well maintained. And it's not like you're having to play fast and loose with trying to slide down a muddy bank to get down to this waterfall point. It is quite busy, there's a constant stream, although I realise that that was a bit of a joke in itself as I say that, but there is a constant stream of people coming through. So there's a little bit of a queue to be able to get to that spot where you can see the waterfall. And I know that this place is designed originally to be like this place of tranquility and a place where you can come to meditate. And I did see up where we were buying the tickets from, there was a meditation room just next door. And I get that I'm kind of adding to the problem by being here, but there are so many tourists here, I suppose, to see the waterfall and enjoy the waterfall. It's noisy and it's busy, and I just don't think it's got that quiet tranquility to it anymore. So it's perhaps not a place that I would choose to come and meditate at. I'm a pleased I paid that £6.45. Yes, I am. Would I ever come and do it again? Absolutely not, and I can say that categorically. It's one of those experiences where you do it once, you've paid the money, but if I came into this area again with friends and they wanted to come, I'd choose another activity to do whilst they came here. <laughs> visited the waterfall, spent enough time there to, I feel, got our money's worth. We've also stopped by the cafe to refuel with an ice cream, which in fairness was significantly cheaper than what we paid when we went to St. Ives. And I think now it's just time to wander on back to the car. I believe that there's a little bit of this route where we then have to go off on a one-way system. So to stop it from looking very repetitive from coming up, I'll probably even get you guys back out when we start going off on that one-way system. I read an information plaque that has let us know that it turns out this is a temperate rainforest. Temperate rainforests are often home to very rare species and this is actually an SSSI which stands for a site of significant scientific interest and that is because at the waterfall area there was one form of very rare moss and one form of very rare liverwort. So I suppose even though we have paid the money to be able to get into it, our money has actually been going towards something that helps to conserve some very rare species and the same information board also went on to say that they've planted just over 4,000 trees in the last 10 years. Now I don't really know whether that's an impressive number or not but if they're putting it on an information board I'm assuming that it must be something quite impressive. So Mm, seeing like feeling ripped off by the cost of getting into it is perhaps not right but it's at least nice knowing that my money is actually going towards something very beneficial and at the same time I got to see an awesome waterfall for it. worth it I would say yes but a few logistics perhaps to go over I'm assuming that if you're watching this video and you're planning on coming here it's because you are planning your day here a lot better than what I did loads of people had gone with Wellington boots instead of just hiking shoes or trainers and it just gave them the flexibility to go wherever they wanted at the foot of the waterfall without needing to worry about either having to take off their shoes or get their shoes soaking wet or a bit like what I did which was to try and get onto as many of the stepping stones as possible without actually going in the water. So maybe bring a pair of wellies, if not, maybe you might wanna bring like a small hand towel or something, just to be able to get the water and a little bit of mud off of your feet if you're going in barefooted, which lots of people do as well. The other thing is that 
there are three places where we could see that you could park a car right down in the very bottom of the valley where the road crosses over the river is a free lay-by and we did manage to get a spot in that but otherwise up on the two sides it's three pounds to park one is in a proper car park on the side of the road one is in a farmer's field the farmer's field one does advertise that it's the closest parking to St Nectan's Glen and when we were coming back we took the footpath across that car park and it's not false advertising it's definitely the, the closest so given that they both are three pounds if you can't get here for free I'd say go up to the farmer's field instead on the south side of the river. <laughs>